when Muhammad, the founder of the religion, called out to all Muslims, and that's how he won most of his wars, by saying, I have been ordered, and all believing men have been ordered to attack and kill and maim anyone unless they testify, unless all men testify to the fact that Allah is the one and only, Muhammad is his messenger. My father disobeys that. Um, well, uh, Majid Nawaz tried to obey that first and then stopped obeying it. But the fact that that scripture is there and that history of militarism is there belies the motion that Islam is a religion of peace. The point I want to make is mm. Islam is a religion when you take the scripture that can be employed to wage war and Islam as a civilization has known periods of peace but you cannot if you pay attention to that history, pay attention to the evidence, continue to say that Islam is a religion of peace. No monotheistic religion is a religion of peace. No monotheistic religion is only a religion of war. It is both. But in Islam, and that's why we are debating it in the 21st century, there are more occurrences of violence and war and strife and subjection of women than there are in other religions. And my point, our point is, let's not deny it, because by denying it we don't solve the problem. Let's admit it and then as intelligent people take it from there is that Martin Luther must not be judged by the standards of civilization that we after an accumulation of thousands of years have arrived at he must be judged by the standards of civilization that were around during his time and that's how society I, evolves and it, we recognize that for every other faith and for every other piece of literature well, yet when it comes to Islam somehow we want to suspend Douglas what Douglas we've Murray learned now, about that on. and quote the verbatim from texts uh, Majid. Yes, we read things in their context. I mean, you read we Chaucer do. in context. Chaucer doesn't have followers. It doesn't have 1.4 billion people who believe everything. Sorry, I quoted Martin Luther, believe, not Chaucer. Or are meant to believe everything. I, I suppose Martin Luther does have followers. If doesn't. you allowed me to speak, yeah. I'd address your Luther point. You'll, yeah. I'll get there, I promise. Right. Um, <laughs> you, don't, we, we don't, you don't have followers of Shakespeare who insist on, uh, or are meant to be insist on line by line following everything Shakespeare did and believing everything he wrote. That's because it's literature. Actually, what's happening, Majid, is your thing, you, point, you put your finger on the problem. Absolutely. It's not us that isn't applying the rigorous critical faculties. We're applying them to the Quran as we would to any other work of literature. You're not, because you can't. Because Majid knows very well Majid that if he... Majid is a believer. And believers are not allowed to contextualize the Sorry, text. Sorry, can I, is that can true? I bring you back to my question? What but about wait, Martin? Is that, is that really true? If you were, well, well, if, if you were if allowed to contextualize, moment, you would say if, some of the things that right. Muhammad did is crap. If, if, you would say uh, some of yeah. the things he did is Imagine, is it true that you cannot, so you cannot contextualize? Can right. Is that true? No, it's not true. Now, can I say... What do you think of Muhammad taking a six-year-old as a bride? What do you okay. think of that? I don't think that's a particularly good idea. I don't think that's a particularly good idea. I don't think that's a particularly good idea. However, <laughs> what I would say is that there are many, many people in history that have done such a thing. And what we're talking about here is the failure to contextualize actions for the standards of their time. Martin Luther was a fundamentalist, yes. wasn't he? Absolutely. All Christians would agree with you that he was a fundamentalist. Can I now answer Majid? Please. Yes. <laughs> and then right. I want to bring him okay. over. If there were currently Lutherans, there are Lutherans around, you meet them occasionally in Scandinavia and so on, very nice, <laughs> very nice it is. And peaceable guys they are by and large. If, however, there was a large proportion of Lutherans somewhere in Scandinavia that started blowing up non-Lutherans, or no, sorry, let's be absolutely right, started massacring peasants. Do you think the people would say, hang on a minute, let's not criticise Martin Luther, he did that by the standards of his time, we shouldn't criticise his followers all that much, we shouldn't point out what he sends on. No, we just say, you know, don't go and massacre peasants. Full stop. It was rubbish at Douglas, the time, it's rubbish the now. It's the same with you're the Quran. You're missing the point. If you're failing to judge... Let me bring in your opinion. Sure. Oh, um, oh um, on that, there is a wide, wide range of interpretation, which is why there is a history that not many people look at, and that's part of the problem, that nobody's actually looked at the history of debate within Islam about every sort of aspect that can come to mind. I disagree with that. The reason why I disagree with it, it would be more accurate, Ziba, if you said, the scholars that you find attractive say that. But there are a bunch of scholars with a great number of following in Islam 
take a mo all of them are self-appointed, by the way, because there is no hierarchy, there is no seminary of Islam, except uh, a University of Al Azhar, and we know the products of Al Azhar. The Islamic Brotherhood, <laughs> Hassan Al Banna. When you look at the Sunni Islam, when you look at Ayatollah Khomeini in the 20th century, the most influential guy of Shia Islam, another self-appointed scholar. You have all of it. Sheikh Bin Baz. He has the greatest following. Sheikh Al Qaradawi. Maybe these are individuals that are not attractive to you, but then it would be more accurate if you stated that. They are attractive to many Muslims, not thousands, but in the millions. And what they say, and that's why they're influential, is they challenge every single Muslim individual. Are you a true Muslim? If you are a true Muslim, you live by what the Quran dictates, you follow the example of the Prophet right, Muhammad. Their interpretation, and those though. scholars who insist on that are far more so, influential, yeah. far more powerful so, than you, Ayan, you soft quoted, spoken, you wonderful, <laughs> cuddly. <laughs> when you, well, you can start by saying Islam is something to, a different thing to 1.57 billion people. And from that general point, you can reduce it to what is it that unifies them? And ultimately you will get to the Quran and the Hadith. The Quran, the Hadith, the Day of Judgment. The belief in the Day of Judgment. And if you take those three concepts, then it's far from a religion of peace. Because you look, first of all, not only at the content of the Quran, in context, fine, I'm willing to contextualize it, but what if other believers are not and they're influential? What if I want to read Muhammad's practices simply as a matter of history, another great figure in history? But more Muslims, millions of Muslims don't want to do that right, and so really so want to follow his practice. That you are what able if to more and more Muslims invest in the hereafter more than they invest in life? Then we have a problem. And, and that's why I ask you to vote against the motion, it cannot be only a religion of peace. Because if it Douglas were only a religion of peace, if it were perfect, why would we have this debate? Douglas, why would given, we talk, be talking about the bombing? Had, can you be 15 be seconds? Be succinct, I promise. Yeah. Um, uh, Majid uh, trying to imply that the whole extremist problem is a sort of misreading by engineers and literary critics. <laughs> Unfortunately, that's simply not the case, hasn't been historically in Islam, and isn't now. Um, uh, uh, Ayatollah Khomeini, uh, who I, uh, who Ayan mentioned earlier, was not a self-trained engineer, rich boy like Bin Laden, unfortunately, and managed to hurtle a very developed, distinguished culture back in time, in 1979, and hurtled this country back into the state it's currently in, under these uh, cloaked dictators. Okay. The Grand Mufti yeah. of Egypt is right, not we, we a self we see where you're going, and, and yet he taught people that all Muslims should go and fight the Israelis.